Forward airs. They're often one of a character's most important moves, and they're also what my patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs voted on to be the next episode of the animation tier list series. As usual, every aspect of the animation is being covered here. We're talking about technical execution, creativity, sense of impact, any cleverness in the references used, sound design when appropriate, everything. Let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Babbel. Do you want to speak, read, and listen in a brand new language? Babbel's app has you covered, and can quickly get you engaged in real-world conversations, using lessons designed by real language teachers along with games, podcasts, and even live online classes with experts. I'm from Canada, which is bilingual English and French, but I actually switched over to Spanish classes as soon as I could and loved it. There's... Well, there's no Spanish around me at all, so it all faded pretty fast, but Babbel's got me covered. No me malinterpretes. Todavía no hablo bien español, pero estoy aprendiendo. Babbel has proven to get you started in a new language in three weeks or less and has flexible subscriptions and a money-back guarantee, so there's no harm in checking it out. If you're interested, use my link in the description and pinned comment of this video to get a massive 60% off and start speaking fast. Starting off as we often do with Mario, you know, this is a classic, it's a big punch, it's the forward aerial. Love the spike on this, makes it very satisfying to land. Now, he does turn a little bit awkwardly while he's doing this, which I think is a new pose that he strikes in Ultimate. If I remember right, in previous games this wasn't something that he did. There's a reason for this, he faces the camera more so, I think in general moment to moment gameplay at proper speed and scale, it sort of does what they're setting out to do, but when you look at it in sort of finer detail up close, it does come off as just a little bit stunted and awkward. He's kind of torquing his shoulder and doing the move sideways in a way I'm not convinced would actually generate that much power. It feels kind of unnatural. This is actually something that's come up in the past when I've had to get thumbnails of Mario's forward era. Just like, okay, well, if I go frame by frame here, which ones of these frames do I actually use? Which one of these really communicates the, this is the art part of the move. This is where it really hits and lands impact, right? Like, this is probably the most classic one, but it looks kind of weird. Rather than putting his entire body weight behind the strike, he aligns himself with the Z axis and then kind of rotates along that. There's no real reason he should be doing that. Going in frame by frame isn't actually fair, that's not how you judge the animations at the end of the day, but it does have an impact, right? If I'm doing it in this kind of situation, I think you can probably see where I'm coming from. And then because this is an aerial, the other thing we need to look at with these is the landing animation. In Mario's case, I like the way he catches them. Himself. It's nothing super fancy, but very convincing weight distribution on the way down. This is a real fan favorite. I know I'm going to get crucified if I don't put it in S tier. I've been willing to do that before. So the question is, does this deserve S tier? And you know what? I'm going to say no. I really like the concept. It feels fantastic to land, but I'm sorry, he looks kind of awkward. I get what they were doing, I understand the purpose behind it, but even though he remains facing the camera the entire time, which is a big deal, it makes the silhouette a little bit more pleasant in some aspects, it also robs the move of a little bit of a sense of power. S tier doesn't necessarily mean a move has to be perfect, but that's more than like a slight nitpick. Dr. Mario is while we're here, why not? Yeah, the animation is obviously exactly the same. What's different is the result. Dr. Mario doesn't spike when he lands the sweet spot. What he does get is that really satisfying meaty impact punch. I think landing it feels more satisfying than landing Mario's spike. That's one of my favorite sound effects in Ultimate Period. When I first picked the game up, I was looking to play a brawler character specifically because of how much I like it. Literally no other reason. I'm not actually going to put it in a different tier because of that, but considering Mario was already borderline, honestly it's kind of close. Another couple of Mario dunks here. We got Donkey Kong, we got Yoshi. See, I think I prefer DKs to the Marios. The double fist gives it a greater sense of power, as you'd expect from a heavyweight, and there's also just a little bit less of that awkwardness in the animation. The big dramatic recovery also means that exactly how smooth the landing animation is depends a fair amount on when exactly he enters it. That's not a huge deal. Like, there it looks great, but if I do it out of a short hop, yeah, he does have to snap a little bit. That happens with lots of aerials. That's just kind of the nature of the beast in practice. This isn't really something that you notice a whole lot. They don't have a huge impact on my decision, but they are obviously worth looking at. Even landing the sour spot of this one feels good. And then the sweet spot. Yeah, that's fantastic. And then Yoshi. This one doesn't feel anywhere near as strong to me. It is a fairly strong move, but it doesn't impart it that well. Now, because of Yoshi's insane air drift, I think having him look a little bit more reserved actually makes more sense with the way you use the move, but 
<sighs> it is a pretty strong spike and you don't necessarily get that from the way it looks. He just looks too controlled and kind of abruptly snaps out of any kind of momentum building right at the end. I do really like the landing animation though, the way he falls on his face, that's cute. It feels okay to connect on the sour spot. And a bit better on the sweet spot. <laughs> But not the most satisfying spike that I've looked at. Considering how cartoony he is, though, there's surprisingly little body breaking on this one. His head does get a bit bigger, but they could have definitely exaggerated that more and it probably would have helped. Although making him more top heavy would make how abruptly he stops in midair like this even a little bit more jarring. Donkey Kong S Yoshi B tier. It's fine. It's just a little bit of a step down from these other ones. Let's finish up the DK crew while we're here. We got Diddy, K Rule. These guys have similar forward airs. Anyone else with the same style? Yeah, Incineroar, Squirtle. So I guess we'll just just throw the entire Pokemon trainer in there. That'll do for now. So this is the first forward air we've looked at so far that is intended to be weak. It's not much of a kill move at all. Look at this. So I'm not going to hold a lack of impact against it compared to some of the other moves on the list. At least not to the same degree I would if this was supposed to be a good kill move. My problem with this one, and uh, believe me, I know this is kind of a weird thing to say about a video game attack. It feels fake. It barely feels like this is even an attack. It's just kind of there and then suddenly not there. There's not really any kind of sense of anticipation, even for a fast attack. Plenty of fast attacks that only have a couple of frames of startup still get to convey some wind up into the move. This is just kind of instantly there. The spin lines come out while the attack is still thrusting forward. I think if I slow it down even more, is Diddy spinning while he's still extending his legs? Not really. That starts up slightly after okay there's a little bit of spin but it's still mostly like he's attacking straight and then spins during the recovery portion so why do the spin lines start up so quickly go frame by frame just to see what's happening here okay so there's the actual extension and then technically the spin lines start up afterwards but it's like literally one frame so functionally you can't even really track that yeah, it makes the entire thing look a little bit weird. The impression that it gives me at full scale is that he's starting his recovery spin while he still has the attack out. And it, yeah, I don't like it. Landing animation is very sensible though. K rule again, kind of a drop kick, but a very different idea on it. It's got a lot of personality behind it, but does it work that well as an attack animation? I feel like it actually looks like the force is a little bit misdirected. He kind of flops around a little bit, and the way that his legs kick out is more semicircular than straight out. It looks fun, like it's a fun animation. It's I got lots of charm. I love the flop he does if he actually has to use the recovery animation. You know, he's kind of a wacky Saturday morning cartoon villain, literally, for better or for worse. I do think it reads better at full gameplay scale and speed than if you look at it really close up, but it's not the most impactful feeling move on his kit, and it does hit pretty hard. I also think it works a lot better if he actually makes contact, in which case the particle effects kind of cover up some of the floppy feet that he's got going on, and the sound design of his vocalizations helps a lot. And then we get to Incineroar, who actually avoids a lot of the issues from both Diddy and King K. Rool. The attack looks a lot more focused and directed in the direction it's supposed to be going in, and his recovery animation looks a lot more natural and actually pretty smooth. Shame that this is yet another Incineroar kick attack with his tiny, spindly little legs. I hate that he uses them in so much of his moveset. He's a wrestler character, of course he's got to do drop kicks and stuff, but man, what an unfortunate character design to stick this on. I love the recovery animation. And I know that a lot of people don't necessarily feel this way. I've gotten some pushback for saying that I hate Incineroar's kick attacks. So I guess a little bit of a hot take. Maybe it doesn't feel like this should be a hot take to me. I hate the leg attacks. But in essentially every other way, the animation is great. It's thematically appropriate. It's technically well done. I don't know. I'm kind of torn. So Squirtle is back in very weak territory. And I have some of the same problems that I have with Diddy's. It just kind of seems to pop out of nowhere. You can see here, it really does look kind of jerky. I don't think it's quite as bad. And the water particle effects look cool and cover up some of the issues with it. But yeah, there's a little bit of a defined jerkiness to this one. The landing animation is kind of inappropriate too. Squirtle just sort of snaps back into position. Now, this is a very quick nimble character and a quick nimble move on that character. It's a combo move. It's pretty safe to throw out. So low landing lag is to be expected, but you can animate for low landing lag in a way that looks natural. This doesn't really look that natural. Ivysaur is a step up. This is a sword arc essentially, except it's done with vines in a whip motion. You know, vine whip is a move that Ivysaur uses, so it makes sense. And there's a decent amount of momentum generation from Ivysaur's body here. I like the way Ivysaur winds up and then slams down. I definitely feel like it could be 
exaggerated more, but at the same time, doing it this way allows more of the focus to be placed on the actual vines themselves. And I like the particle effect on here. The green motion smear creates a really satisfying arc. Planning animation is pretty par for the course. Works fine. I like the way the vines retract back in smoothly. Impact sound not nearly as much. It just feels a bit inappropriate for the kind of move this is. It's not a bad generic sound effect. I just feel like having a more dedicated one would probably be better. I think the Charizard one works a bit better. As for the actual animation itself, it's okay. It looks a little bit almost pinched to me though, a little bit cramped. Charizard doesn't actually have very big arms, so this is a little bit of an awkward choice for a far-reaching forward air. They're really trying to compensate with the claw particle effects, but it still doesn't quite work for me and never has. Back in Brawl, this was a fire blast, and I think that works way better. The landing animation has a little bit of a weird momentum transfer, and it's again coming from the way that Charizard, the only word I can use is pinches together. So Diddy Kong's going in F tier. Not only is it just a very kind of boring category of move that doesn't do much to show off Diddy's personality, but I just kind of hate it. King K. Rule I'm torn on because it's really fun, but it's also messy and doesn't really work as an attack animation. I think I'll balance that out with B tier. Incineroar, I'm going to give a very reluctant A tier to. I hate the legs. I really hate the legs, but I've got to admit, other than that, everything about this is pretty well done. Squirtle, C tier. The water particle effects are doing a lot of heavy lifting. I'm going to give Ivysaur A tier. I like this one. And then Charizard, I think C tier as well. It's, yeah, it's awkward. Let's do Bowser as another giant claw slash. Me too, I guess, kind of belongs there as well in its own way. And then Wolf, claw slash as well. I know Banjo is doing a punch, not a slash, but he, he's a bear. He probably has claws, right? Okay, so Bowser. This works way better as an arcing claw slash for me than Charizard's does. A lot of that just comes from the fact that Bowser actually has appropriately sized arms to be doing this kind of attack. I love the pose he ends up in, very dynamic and strong looking, and it's not a problem for me at all that he doesn't flip forward while he's doing this, even though it looks like his arm is generating enough force that you could maybe make a case for that, especially because he's got his shell tipping a little bit over the center of mass there, so maybe that should be tipping forward and continuing to make a move, but it still feels pretty natural to me. Landing animation... Okay, just kind of tucks his arm under himself, that makes sense. The getup is a little bit snappy and weird. Yeah, a little bit noticeable even in context. Not the world's biggest deal, but not perfect. Feels good to hit. This is where that visceral claw sound really comes into play. There's not much in the game that I think is a more appropriate use of that sound effect. Part of me almost wishes this was a two-parter. You know, you hit and then you release, like to really just let it get driven home how much Bowser's clawing into you. But given Smash's history with multi-hit aerials, we can probably take a pass on that. And then Wolf. Now, I don't love the pose that Wolf ends up in at the end. It feels a little bit loping, which works for a Wolf character, but not the strongest or most well-defined. And frankly, there's a short period where he looks like a little bit of a goober, not necessarily what I expect for his characterization. If you cut him off partway through, sort of more the way the move's intended to be used a lot of the time though, I think it looks really good. And I think if you actually hit someone with this one, it works way better in midair. I think part of the issue is that this pose here almost looks like he's suspending his arm in someone, right? So if it's hitting empty space. It looks not the most natural, but here, better at least. It's also just not the most impactful looking animation in the world, but it's not supposed to be. This is a combo tool. It feels appropriate. And I like the custom particle effects, and as with a lot of Wolf's moves, the custom sound design of the claw slashes is carrying it like crazy. That alone raises it up a few pegs. It just feels so good to throw out. And feeling good to throw out is a lot of what you're asking an animation to do. So even if there are some issues that I have with this one, if I like the way it works in game, then I really can't fault it too much for some of the other stuff. Mewtwo Shadow Scratch. And no, this is not Shadow Claw. I know that's what everyone calls it. I know it should be called Shadow Claw, but it's not. Solid sense of power on this one. This is a beast of a move, and I'm not sure that the chosen direction here is necessarily the ideal one to take just to convey how much power it has, but as far as this horizontal claw slash direction is concerned, if that's what you are going with, then I think this is a pretty good implementation of it. Even with how quick it comes out, there is still a little bit of a sense of wind up. It doesn't feel like it's coming out of absolutely nowhere, and he has some decent follow through, torquing along sort of a central action line there. He does kind of pinch in a little bit near the end, which is the same thing that I criticized Charizard's for, but I think this particular body motion works way better 
character and Mewtwo turns to face away from the camera. So they're hiding some of that messiness and not only that, I think they're actually cheating a little bit and moving his non-acting arm into sort of an unnatural position to look better in the silhouette. And that's a totally valid technique. You are absolutely allowed to cheat in animation to look better in moment to moment gameplay. Landing animation is nice. He doesn't look like he's hitting the ground too hard, which is completely appropriate for a floaty psychic Pokemon. Also sort of ties into the bit of a flowing feel that it has. Banjo. So again, even though he's not literally using a claw slash here, the overall motion is very similar to Bowser, which is why I wanted to include it. And it's even more exaggerated and it works really well for me. Yeah, really great sense of wind up into power on this one. And if I let the entire thing play out, he goes almost literally horizontal. He really lets himself get carried into it. Planning animation works as well. It's very similar to Bowser's again. He tucks his arm underneath him and again it's got that little bit of slight jerkiness on the get up. It's not quite as bad if nothing else just because it looks like there's a bit less mass to move around so slightly less effort is warranted. A lot of get up animations are like this. Again I really want to emphasize I'm not holding it against them too much and connecting with it feels really good. This is one that I think might have deserved the meteor punch sound effect, not meteor, meteor, more meaty, the same one that Doc gets, but I think it feels perfectly satisfying. Bowser, I think this is a pretty easy S tier. What a huge call up from Smash 4, by the way, where it looked, let's be real, a little bit pathetic. Mewtwo, A tier, I like it. I don't love it in quite the same way. Wolf, I actually think I'm going to give A tier as well, and this is way more generous than I'd usually be for a move that I have several issues with, but it just feels so good to use an actual gameplay. And then Banjo, the big punch joining the big leagues. Love this thing. Ganondorf's got another big punch. Let's put that in there. And then Sheik's kind of looks like Wolf. So you know what? That's probably telling me I should just do the Zelda gang. Young Link, Toon Link, and Zelda herself. Ganondorf's big punch. This is actually another one that feels way better than in Smash 4. That particle effect that gave it really does a lot to sell it. Not that it necessarily needed that much help. It already felt good to use. Nice sense of anticipation and follow through. I like the final pose he ends up in. A little bit more viewable from this side. Yeah, he looks like he's putting a very appropriate amount of force behind that swing. And then funny enough, Ganondorf is like an infamously not reference heavy character, but these forward airs really haven't had many references attached to them on any character up to this point, and Ganondorf is one of the exceptions. There are a few moments you can argue this looks like it might be pulled from. I think this is one of the best landing animations in the game. I love the way he slams his fist into the ground, and then the way he gets up looks, again, slightly unnatural, but better than a lot of these, and it feels so good to land. <laughs> That sound effect they picked for it, that like heavy, thuddy, magical sound is perfect. Link. This has always been a fun concept for a forward air. It definitely helps him stand out compared to a lot of them. It works well in Ultimate. In fact, it works really well. Such a good sense of build up into blazing speed on this one. I don't love the follow through. I feel like he could have a little bit more of an exaggerated motion afterward, maybe even do another spin. His sword is just generating that much momentum, but it is a nice final pose that he ends up in even if it looks maybe slightly too controlled for just how much force he's been generating. Landing animation is good, that hefty fall onto one knee. The way he gets up looks a little bit more natural than many of them. The blue-white particle effect that they went with in Ultimate works really well, and even though the change to make the first hit a multi-hit connector works a little bit worse from a gameplay perspective because... Fair 1 used to be one of his best moves and now it's not. I think in terms of how it actually makes the move feel to land... Yeah, that's an improvement. And then Young Link, similar concept, much smaller sword, still generates a decent amount of force though, and the silhouette that he ends up in is still satisfying. In fact, I think it actually feels a little bit more appropriate because I can totally buy that he's not generating nearly the same kind of force to make it hard to control and have him keep spinning around. The landing animation's a bit jerkier on him, he's got to snap his leg into position more, but the way he gets up is roughly the same, meaning still pretty good. It's a swishier sounding sword. But again, fits the character and on contact still feels good. And then Toon Link, let's just start off with the sound design. So this actually sounds way less swishy than Young Link. Yeah. That's actually a really nice sound effect, but then of course he connects it. I hate this, and I'm going to mention it every time how much I hate it. It's just ear splitting to connect, and Toon Link... Yeah. He really relies on that forward air kill confirm. Okay, then on to the actual animation itself, though. I really like it. It's got a great sense of momentum to it. He actually does do the follow through spin, creates a satisfying pose the entire way through. I think it flows really nicely into the way he falls. The upward swipe robs it of a little bit of a sense of power because he's fighting against gravity and this is a kill move so that does matter, but it still sort of fits his overall cartoony direction. I can buy that this is a powerful move. It feels a little bit more like a funny swat, but 
it's Toon Link. Landing animation is pretty similar to Link and Young Link, but it's more exaggerated, and I think it's actually my favorite out of any of them. He gets up a little bit more naturally as well. It's helped out once again by his different proportions, because yeah, he's got shorter legs, so that step through he needs to do isn't as exaggerated. There's less distance to travel. And then Sheik. So first off, this here, this feels incredible to do. The way they designed her particular arc and the way her body weight shifts forward, that's one of the most satisfying moves to spam in Smash as far as I'm concerned. Her actual landing animation, I don't think it's really that good. The landing is okay, the way she catches herself, but she really springs up quickly. Even for a lightweight ninja, it feels slightly snappy, but the thing is, it lasts for so little time. And that one, which is actually just her natural landing animation, is often what you see instead, and that one works great for this kind of move. So I wish her actual landing animation was a little bit more like that, frankly, because when I was first testing this out, I thought this was her landing animation. And in that sense, it's like, yeah, it's a low landing leg move and she's not really committing to it too much. So she doesn't need to spring up too much. And then Zelda. So this here, this is actually a pretty well done animation. Generates a little bit of momentum with the spin before she goes into that nice extension. I think maybe she could tuck in a little bit more on the wind up. It comes off as maybe just a little bit almost floppy if you look at it at least in slow motion. You know, if she tucked her knee in more and then was able to act as a little bit more of a coiled spring kind of motion, it might help a bit, but it's not bad and I think at full speed. You essentially don't really notice it. And then the main thing for me is the recovery. I love how smoothly she does the spin here as she goes back into a more neutral stance. Now, what I don't like about this is that it's on Zelda. Why is she doing this kind of kick? I don't think it really makes a lot of sense. Two very different hitboxes between the sour spot and the sweet spot. And it's well set up. The spark on the tip of her toe is a clever solution to sort of make it intuitive which one of those you're going to hit. The only thing is, I don't think that sound effect for the sweet spot is nearly impactful enough for just how beastly of a move this is. You know, it feels a little bit sparkly and jangly, and this is all stuff I've said about her back air before, and they're essentially the same move. And then the landing animation is actually quite good. Again, there's a little bit of snappiness to it. I think I'm probably just going to stop pointing that out, because essentially all of them have this. It would actually be more interesting to note when one doesn't feel a little bit snappy. But the way she lands on the ground feels totally in place. Ganondorf S tier, the heavies are really just on a roll so far. Link and Young Link, I think I'm both going to give A tier to. They feel satisfying. Link's feels a bit more satisfying. Young Link's feels a bit more appropriate in some aspects of it. Toon Link B tier would probably be A tier if not for that sound effect, but it really brings it down for me. And it's got some other things as well. The swattiness, sure, it feels more appropriate on Toon Link than it would feel on a lot of other characters, but it's still doesn't quite convey the kind of kill move it is. Sheik is gonna get S tier. And then Zelda B tier, the exact same as I ranked her back air. Cool move concept. I don't think it fits Zelda at all though. Yeah, let's do Pikachu, Pichu, and then Sonic has kind of the same thing. And then actually so does Falco. Oh, and by the way, it's summer now and this studio doesn't have air conditioning. So if you see me recording in shorter segments, that is so I don't die. This one's got a nice sense of flow to it. The particle effects look good. Using Pikachu's head as an attack is a pretty natural way to implement a forward air here. There's a coiling spring motion here. It's not totally straightforward. Like Pikachu is sort of arcing its head down a little bit. I feel like, you know, coiling up to a more compressed position and then being able to just spring your head straight forward would make it look a little bit more powerful, but this one's power isn't really sold by the initial extension. It's more the rotation and the electrical particle effects, and it's not the most powerful forward air to begin with. Landing animation, like with a lot of these, has Pikachu landing really flat. I like that little rubber bounce it does at the end there. And then Pichu's in comparison basically just doesn't have a sense of extension at all. It's pretty much all just coming from the spin. They probably could have exaggerated a bit more and made it look a bit snappier, but I think for the context of the kind of move it is on this particular particular tiny character, it works okay. Pikachu looks almost happy to be landing on the ground. Pichu very decidedly does not. Pichu's reaction is definitely more realistic, but hey, Pokemon's a happy, fun, shiny world where people solve all their problems with fighting magical animals. I feel like we can afford to live in a little bit of optimism. And both of these feel pretty good to land with the extended electrical hitbox. And then Sonic, basically the same concept. So first off, this shouldn't really be here. This should be the Sonic Eagle. Like, this should absolutely be the Sonic Eagle. I'm pretty sure this is a holdover from the Brawl days where Sonic was just a very last minute addition in his moves that was kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of random moves from other characters. And he's just kind of stuck with it ever since. It does sort of fit him. I don't love that initial animation. I actually really like the 
recovery though. So this part here is fine, nothing spectacular. The pose is good and a little bit stylish though. This ending bit though, that twirl, that was working for me. It's got a little bit of attitude behind it with the outstretched arms and it does kind of fit into Sonic as he's portrayed in his own games. Landing animation. It's again got that bounce. This is one of the best, if not the best landing animations I've looked at so far. That feels really natural and looks great actually. Yeah, this is one of the very few landing animations that I actually really notice even at full gameplay scale. That feels great. Now, if we take it that the Star Fox characters in Smash are inspired by Star Fox gameplay, which very rarely features them outside of their R-Wings, and even then, most of their inspiration in Smash came before they were out of their R-Wings at all, really certainly much, then I think it's reasonable to suggest that this one is inspired by the classic Arwing barrel roll, and it looks pretty good. Even though he is obviously not literally in a fighter plane right now, or a fighter spaceship, it's kind of a similar boat with Captain Falcon where they're trying to invoke the spirit of the vehicle. In the case of Captain Falcon, it's a race car, so they make him extremely fast and reckless. In the case of Falco, this does make me think Arwing, and it's a pretty stylish looking silhouette as well. Falco has by far the most striking body shape for this kind of move. He's got the sharp beak and is emphasized pretty well, and I love the way he pops out at the end of the hitboxes there. Definitely enough to sell me on the knockback afterwards, which is something that multi-hits can struggle with from time to time. This one's okay. And then the landing animation is actually pretty relevant for this one because this has a landing hitbox on it. Uh... Nothing about the animation really suggests that should necessarily be the case. He lands kind of hard, I guess, but not really harder than a lot of characters. They could probably do that a bit better. It's something that you'll learn pretty quickly when fighting Falco anyways, but it's just one of those things where I wish if only a couple of drag down aerials in Smash had these kinds of landing hitboxes that it was, there was some kind of more consistent visual language to say which ones those were. Not the end of the world though. The rats, I think I'm going to give B tier to. They're fine. The concept is perfectly acceptable for the kinds of characters they are, but they're not spectacular. Sonic is tricky, so it's the same core concept is the rats minus the electricity, which carries it a lot. And I don't really think it's the perfect choice for a forward air. I really wish it was the Sonic Eagle. At the same time, it's not a horrible concept and it's got some actual attitude behind it, which a lot of Sonic's moves can be sadly kind of lacking in. This doesn't really have that problem to the same degree. And I really want to give it bonus points for that landing animation, which I never do, but it's so good. Yeah, you know what? A tier. I like it. And then Falco, I think I would give A tier too as well. It would get higher A, not S, if the landing hitbox was better conveyed, but I really like his pose. It's very evocative of the imagery of his series. That just leaves us with one Star Fox character left. This is sort of a weird one, and its concept has stayed roughly the same throughout at least most of the Smash titles. I think they gave it a little bit of sauce in Ultimate that it kind of needed. I love how even though there's a lot going on, Fox's body stays in a fairly consistent uh, diagonal line, I guess, yeah, that way. He looks well balanced and in control, even though he's throwing out that massive flurry of kicks. And there's still a decent sense of power behind them and the finisher works well despite, again, how fast they're coming out. That doesn't always work. Satisfying to throw out, I like the sound effects used. And that little bit of floatiness that it gained back in Ultimate contributes a little bit more. It's fun to connect with as well. Yeah, that just rapid fire hit and the ends on a pretty satisfying sound effect. Landing animation, and again, this is pretty relevant because in practice, this is often used as a drag down move. It's, yeah, the falling down here actually has a little bit of style to it. It makes sense for the type of move. This is one where obviously in reality, it should be changing a lot depending on exactly when Fox is in the animation when he actually lands on the ground. But that's not really something that at full speed, you're going to be able to track all that well. Fox is just moving way too quickly. So this kind of just bailing out stance works well. A tier. It's cool and it feels fun to use. I'll do Luigi here. And you know what? Let's just finish off the OG 12s and Dark Samus, I guess. Kirby, Ness, Falcon, Puff. This knife hand or karate chop. It's such a fun move to give to Luigi. I love it. Yeah, you can get two of them out in a short hop. That's really unusual for forward airs. Marth crying in the club remembering his younger days. It feels decently powerful to throw out. It's not the most powerful feeling aerial in the game, but it's also not the most powerful aerial in the game, so that's fine. And the recovery animation has a little bit of um springiness, I guess. I guess you could say as he sort of moves back into that position. There's a nice circular flow to it. I think that fits Luigi as well. Planning animation. Oh, that's great. Oh, he hurts his hand. <laughs> does that work properly at full gameplay scale? Yeah, it does. It totally reads. I should say gameplay scale and speed. Yeah, it shows up. It doesn't show up incredibly well in the way that you practically lo use Luigi, but you can still see it a little bit. His vocalizations work really well with this one too, and it just makes it fun to land. 
Samus. So this is supposed to be the plasma beam, I think. It's kind of a weird way to implement it. The thing is, it's very appropriate for Samus's archetype. It's an anti-air and a pretty dedicated anti-air. Unlike most of these, it's not very good to use on the way down, but it's really good at calling out jumps. So from a functionality perspective, I think it's actually kind of a brilliantly designed move. But does that necessarily mean I love the animation? Uh, it's a bit strange on her, but it's not the most out of place in the world. What I really like is the recovery. It turns into that smooth um, somersault that she's very much known for doing in the Metroid series. So even though this isn't actually a Metroid move, I still kind of get the feeling of playing 2D Metroid when I use it. One thing that I'm really not a fan of is there's basically no differentiation between the linker hits and the final finisher hit, which is decently strong. Show it off here. So the sound design sort of feels like it's building up into a big hit, but the visual doesn't really match up with it. And then apart from the particle effects, Dark Samus looks essentially identical, including that flip at the end there, which feels far less in place on it. You know, at the very least, they give it some of its own cool, creepy movement animations, whereas forward air, it's like, okay, this is literally just copy-pasted from Samus. And animation work is literally the only thing justifying Dark Samus's existence whatsoever here. I'm not impressed by this. Their landing animations are these the same. Yeah, not that you're really going to be seeing either of these all that often. It's really not supposed to be used as a landing aerial, but same thing. Kirby. So simple, like with basically all Kirby's moves, but there's such a fun sense of rotational momentum on this one. It's the word I often use when a move feels just instantaneously and intuitively good to me. It's got a nice sense of flow to it, right down to the recovery afterwards, the way that Kirby spins around pretty quickly there. There's barely any landing animation on this one though, that feels a little bit weird, and this is a very important drag down move for Kirby as well. This is definitely the kind of situation where he could be flattening out a lot more. From a gameplay perspective, I'm kind of happy that he doesn't. Characters like Pikachu do that with a lot of their moves, and that sort of pancaking is kind of infuriating. But if there was any character that could be doing it, right? Kirby's sort of the one, so the fact that he just kind of lands almost a little bit stiffly. He does go down a bit, but it could definitely be more. Ness has a very unique forward air. Um, it works okay on him specifically. It's not my all-time favorite. I think it's a little bit of a bland implementation of the idea. It's got good particle effects that have largely stayed the same for a decent amount of time, but he's definitely got other moves that got larger particle effect upgrades coming into Ultimate. Does put some physical effort into the startup of a psychic move. That's a big boost. I always like it when psychic or magical characters do that. They still look like they're displaying physical exertion. Does kind of a Samus-esque flip over at the end here. This entire animation is actually a bit reminiscent of Samus's. Samus is moving her arm cannon and therefore her entire body in sort of a downwards motion. Ness is, if anything, aiming up slightly, or at the very least holding it in place slightly upwards angled. But for the type of character he is, look at his double jump, right? Flipping around in midair in kind of a floaty, very natural feeling way. That fits him, it's just a nice bit of stylization. Landing animation... Uh... Yeah, not bad, actually. He looks relatively in control, and again, he's a pretty floaty character. The fact that he doesn't go down that far is kind of what I was saying about Sheik. He doesn't really have to suffer in the same way that a lot of characters do with that, like, pop back into position. And then the sound design is back to magic. Personally, I kind of wish that there was a more dedicated sci-fi direction to this kind of thing. I think PSI is sort of the magic of the mother universe, correct me if I'm wrong, but it does feel a little bit out of place on this kind of character. Jigglypuff kind of makes her look like a disfigured alien, and on a lot of characters, I would hate this move, but I think it fits so well with what Puff is going for in terms of game feel. Being able to just drift around and kind of have this out all the time and do what it's supposed to do, it feels good. I don't think it looks particularly good, but I'm willing to give a move a lot of slack if it feels good in actual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Yeah, gross. I'm all for body breaking, but uh, just this distended, disfigured blob of a character. I do actually really like how her arms go along with it, though, just thrusting into the move a little bit more. Recovery animation, which you don't see a whole lot because Jigglypuff gets to just leap out of a lot of stuff. She does a bit of a flip. That one actually feels pretty natural. She's like rubber banding back into place and the momentum just carries forward. And then the landing animation. One of the few that again has a lot of real style and substance behind it. I really like that. It feels a little bit abrupt. The spring up into Pirouette doesn't really have a lot of build up that actually justifies that sudden burst of rotational momentum, but it's got so much spark compared to most of these that I'm willing to cut it some slack. Again. 
Uh, yeah, so this one's going in S tier, but let's talk about it anyways. The Knee of Justice. Not only is this an absolute fan favorite and one of the more satisfying moves in the entire series to land, but it's also just so well defined. It feels immensely powerful to throw out. I love the anticipation into instant release of the knee here, and the pose the Captain Falcon strikes here is so iconic. There are a lot of ways that you could animate a knee strike, but man, they nailed this. It's so recognizable from the silhouette alone. Landing animation... Even it's good. Captain Falcon looks like he's maintained full composure the entire time, and again, it doesn't really suffer from the snappiness that some characters do. Yeah, S tier. Duh. I think Luigi's joining him in S tier. I was kind of borderline on it, but that landing animation really put it over the top for me. Samus B tier. Dark Samus C tier. It pays the Echo Fighter tax, and it particularly pays the Dark Samus Echo Fighter tax, where... Okay, well, the selling point of Dark Samus' new animation work. Actually, you know what? F tier. Samus was already kind of between B and C tier for me, so Dark Samus, definite step down. Kirby A tier. This one just feels fun. Ness, B tier. Concept's cool. That's kind of where my big praise for it ends, though. Jigglypuff, I'm going to do B tier as well, just because the animation is very plain and actually kind of unpleasant to look at, but it does fit her. All right, so we're going to have to do this at some point. The big, dumb overhead sword arc. So we got Marth, Lucina, Roy, Krom, I Ice Climber is basically, I know it's a hammer, but close enough. Actually, King DDD, another hammer. Then we got Mega Man, Shulk, Cloud, Corrin, Hero, Sora. Yeah, okay, we'll tack him on there too. So this is the OG overhead Sora arc, and I still think it's one of the best looking ones. Super graceful. They've had a long time to refine it at this point. That arc is incredibly well defined. I like the pose he gets tucked into at the end. It conveys that he's put a lot of momentum behind the sword, but it's still very much under his control. Perfectly in character for Marth. Comes through even a little bit better from this side where you can see more of his body. Landing animation is very sensible as well. He even gets up pretty comfortably, and Marth feels phenomenal to connect with basically any sweet spot, but this has to be one of my favorites. But what I like about it is the sour spot still feels good. All of this applies to Lucina as well, obviously, except she doesn't get either the, what I think is the more interesting motion trail, or the more satisfying sound effect from the tipper sweet spot. So I definitely prefer Marth's. On basically all his animations, as far as I'm concerned, those traits give him a slight boost. And then onto Roy and Krom's, definitely sort of a rougher, harsher feel for this one. It's in a little bit of a middle ground where it's not as elegant as something like Marth's, which it shouldn't be, obviously, but then it's also not nearly as brutal feeling as something like Ike gets, for example, with his two-hander. It's not a bad animation per se, but I don't really feel like it has quite the same personality as some of these, and it doesn't help that even though Roy has the interesting reverse grip on some of his moves, his forward air doesn't use it. Landing animation is basically the same as Marth and the Cena's, which is to say actually quite good. And then he's got the sweet spot sour spot thing too. It's very obviously a sour spot, but it still feels good to connect with. The sound design is still great, obviously, but it just doesn't have nearly the same heft to it that Marth's does. It's not nearly as satisfying. Part of that is just, to be fair, the way the mechanic inherently works. You're not feeling like you're rewarded for skill as much. Krom, same juxtaposition, which is to say, fine, but a little bit of a step down, just a bit less interesting again. Ike is where we start to get into proper power territory, and I really like the feel of this one, and I love the pose that Ike strikes at the end. He's putting so much force into the blade with both hands that he needs to lean his body forward a little bit to counterbalance it so he doesn't just go spinning out of control. And he He's also not spinning out of control because Ike is an accomplished warrior. Definitely comes through a little bit better when he's facing to the right, but it still works fine here. Landing animation... Again, sensible and snaps into place pretty quickly. They really did the Fire Emblem characters justice here. I guess if you've got a sword in your hand, it's harder to have them crash into the ground, so that means that they have less distance to move, so it looks more natural overall. Connecting it... It feels okay, but this is the obligatory part of the video where I complain about how much better it felt to connect and brawl. This modern, more like swishy, squishy, admittedly faithful Fire Emblem sound design that got imported in. That's been around for the last couple games. It, it doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't sound like I'm running my opponent over with a semi anymore. Other than that, I really like this one though. The way he starts out with both hands on his sword at the top of the arc, but then by the end he's almost like thrown it into position there. That's a cool little detail. Ice Climbers. I really like the arc that the hammers trace. It's like almost a good three quarters of a circle. Really great sense of anticipation and very smooth cooldown. In fact, the actual dedicated recovery portion of the animation is tiny. It basically just takes them into their falling animation, which is why it looks so smooth. Because of how much they tumble, the landing animation is one of those ones that 
should theoretically get tripped up a fair amount depending on exactly when they hit the ground in the animation, but you know, in practice, it actually looks pretty good no matter what. Even if they land when they're completely on their back, it's not really that hard to picture that they just carried momentum forward a couple frames, and at proper gameplay scale and speed, I basically just don't find myself questioning this one at all. It does help if there's both ice climbers with one of them breaking the silhouette up a little bit. Here's the one, it's a little bit more noticeable. Yeah, it looks great. And the sense of impact with Sopo is good. But of course it's the ice climbers, you're supposed to hit with both of them. Yeah, so first I did both climbers hitting and then just the second climber. I actually don't like the sound effect on the follow-up hit anywhere near as much. It really doesn't create that much of a satisfying one-two. It's almost like a bit of a letdown. I guess technically they're punishing you with an inferior sound effect. Y you know what I mean. They're letting you know that you're being punished for connecting the sour spot of the move. But it's still both hits connecting, right? I feel like that should be a good thing. And then if you actually do land the spike... Okay, so you still get the spike sound effect, but even then it's a bit of an abbreviated one. DDD, pretty similar concept overall. I don't like the arc that he travels nearly as much and the recovery isn't quite as smooth. And considering how much bigger he is and how much bigger the hammer is, I'm not even necessarily convinced that it looks like it's hitting a lot harder than the Ice Climbers. It's certainly not a weak looking move and it's got some personality behind it. I like the fairly vicious looking swing into the kind of silly tumble. Pretty on par for King DDD's characterization. But considering how great a lot of King DDD's animations are, this one feels a little bit kind of run of the mill for me. What does save it to some degree though, and this is a big point in favor of a lot of DDD's moves, is the sound design. I do think there are other moves that are enhanced more by it and feel more appropriate in actually connecting it. It's a weirdly weak forward air, so I guess the slightly wimpy impact sound is kind of appropriate. I think that's a weird gameplay design decision first off, but it does mean that this giant hammer swing feels kind of lackluster. There's a pretty nice sound effect on the landing as well. And it feels good, but he's got a little bit of that problem where he bounces kind of weird and abruptly. And then back to at least kind of swords with Mega Man. This one almost needs to be evaluated on different standards than the rest of them. It's a very stylized move. Like with a lot of Mega Man stuff, it's very stiff because it's taking inspiration from his NES sprites more than anything else. I have to bring this up in a lot of episodes. Personally, it's not a direction that I'm a massive fan of. I think the juxtaposition of the 3D model and the 2D pixel-esque movements feels a bit weird more often than not. I think forward air comes out of it okay though. The way he moves his arm is really weird and cramped, but it somehow fits. And the final pose he ends up in does look pretty good, and the sword traces a really nice arc. The way the flames let it stick around for a bit longer looks really cool. Planning animation has that sword fighter benefit again. It actually looks fantastic. It looks better on Mega Man than a lot of characters. He moves in segments almost, like the way he moves his legs around there in kind of a shuffle, which fits the character, Shulk. So this one definitely seems to take some inspiration from Ike, the way that he starts out with two hands and ends up in that one-handed throw. The final pose he ends up in with the counterbalancing looks kind of similar, but not nearly as dramatic. It's got a very fluid whip action from taking it off his back all the way to the final hit. One very smooth, fluid kind of arc. The arc goes very far behind him, which feels good, kind of on par with the ice climbers, but the actual visible trail is not really that impressive. To me, it doesn't leave nearly the same impression as something like Ike's sword, and this especially applies if you do it against a blue background, it kind of fades into it a bit. Landing animation... Yeah, it's a sword fighter landing. It's not nearly as smooth as some of them, the way he sort of rapidly springs off that knee feels slightly too quick, but it's not bad. And then Shulk gets custom sound design, and I've always liked this. And on hit. Clear lightsaber inspiration with a bit of heft behind it. Cloud. This is another double-handed overhead slash, which actually feels more distinct from Ike's than Shulk's does. He ends up in a much more controlled pose and the sword travels much less distance, but it's striking and I really like the wind-up on this one. It's very well defined. He basically goes from clear pose to clear pose with very little time in between, and both of them feel appropriate. It doesn't seem like he gets nearly the same degree of power out of it that Ike does, for example, because he doesn't move the sword as far, but it still feels like a very strong attack and the fact that he keeps both both hands on the sword throughout the entire thing actually justifies the disparity there because he obviously will have more control over his sword and it won't whip out as far if he's got both hands on it. As for the landing animation, he hits the ground a fair amount harder than some of the sword characters, but he still gets up pretty well. This one I actually like. The way a lot of Cloud's moves sound kind of brings them down for me. You know, a bit too swishy. This one feels chunky but still has some of that retro appeal. Corin. First impressions for this one are that it feels kind of stiff and thin 
The stiffness is somewhat appropriate for Corrin, the way that this character moves around. Like, it works okay out of jumps and stuff like that, but it doesn't feel incredible compared to some of these arcs, and the thinness, the particle effect just doesn't seem like there's nearly enough smear, or like an opaque enough smear. It doesn't leave a great presence in the air, slow motion. I think what's going on is, yeah, Corrin holds the sword at kind of a weird angle. I'm actually gonna look at that in frame by frame. What is this? What is this doing as a chamber animation? That's odd. And then as he comes forward, it settles into a more natural position there. Okay. But then it ends slightly funny as well. Kind of looks like he's breaking his shoulder there too. And you're allowed to do body breaking in animation. That's not the end of the world. You don't really notice this all that much. Although as I say that, that seems to kind of be his ending pose. Yeah, it's not too noticeable a proper gameplay scale and you don't really notice it at all on this side. So fair enough. But on this side, which you are theoretically going to be seeing half the time, it is a little bit noticeable. His shoulder looks weird. The landing animation... I'm gonna look at this one in frame by frame as well. So what exactly is happening? Uh, okay, so Oren tucks his face into his elbow there, but only for a couple of frames. That, I think, is why it looks a little bit weird to me, because he kind of just bobs down and then gets right back up. Yeah, this pose that he's striking here, I think would work perfectly fine as the ending pose for a special move or a smash attack or something like that. But when it's only held for a couple of frames, it feels a little bit strange. Hero, basically a one-handed take on Cloud, very similar ending position that he ends up in with the shield arm obviously held differently, but still actually nice. It's got some good counterbalance behind it. This is at least a reasonably hefty move and it does feel like it and I'm a big fan of that ending pose. Very anime, very action hero. Landing animation feels, I'm gonna say pretty good on this side. From this side it's just like very slightly cramped. Yeah, barely. I'm not even really sure it's worth bringing up. And the way he gets up is a little bit slidey. His feet don't look supernatural with the way they move around, but that's about the most minor cheat that you see used in Smash animations. Generally, horizontal motions like that are way less distracting than up and down jerkiness. And it feels pretty good to hit with. I know I didn't include Steve in the initial roundup, but you know what? I think if hammers are fair game, then pickaxe probably should be too. Another character that really needs to be judged by different standards. For what this is, it's pretty well implemented. Despite how obviously stiff he's supposed to be, the actual path that the pickaxe takes has some fluidity behind it. it. Travels in a pretty smooth spiral as it goes out and comes back in. Now, the spiral, does it start up when the move is still coming out? Not really, so he's still allowed to move it mostly straight down to maintain a fair amount of a sense of power, and then he kind of transitions it into a circular scoop back in. Hits with full power, then transfers the momentum to keep it under control. Landing animation... Ah, uh, that doesn't really work so well, yeah. Not as big a deal on this particular character, but still kind of funny looking. Connecting with wood. Iron. Gold, which is actually a bit faster. And of course, who can forget diamond? It's got a spike hitbox on it as well. And this one is really well set up to make the sweet spot portion very intuitive. And he can make stone tools, which he doesn't get very often on this stage. It's fine. They're the same. One thing I will point out, though, is that Steve actually gets custom varying um, swing sound effects. Taken directly from Minecraft, if I'm not mistaken. Cool bit of attention to detail. Then finally, Sora's got the one. He's got the one, two. And he's got the one, two, three. And we gotta look at all of them. I'm really looking forward to the jab episode. Great posing on the first one. It's hilarious. It doesn't look as strong as most of these, but it's a combo tool. This one barely sends opponents anywhere. And it still doesn't look weak. The way he moves his legs to help shift his center of gravity is hilarious. Yeah, just if I'm evaluating that one alone, it's gotta be one of my favorites that Sora has. Hit two. This is the middle linker hit, so it's the least important one, like a middle Pokemon evolution. The final hit is, again, back into great territory. I love the pose he ends up in. Really, really smooth transition and recovery animation. Is the landing animation the same on all these? Hit one... Maybe not. Hit two... Yeah, okay, no, he's got different landing animations for each hit, which makes sense. That one's kind of hard to time for. Okay, so yeah, he does have different ones. None of them look bad, either. That one actually works fantastically. Same there. He doesn't do nearly as much of the slidiness that I just criticized. Then the third one... 
there's a little bit more slidiness on that one, but again, not a big deal. It's a shame that connecting basically all of Sora's moves doesn't feel very good because of the sound design. Yeah. This one isn't my least favorite, at least you get some variance between the different hits. I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game, but I know from my comments that even a lot of Kingdom Hearts players are just like, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that they source those particular sound effects from the earlier games. I always like the star particle effects, though. Alright, Marth. Easy S tier, one of my favorite animations in Smash. So simple, but just absolutely perfect, and a ton of characters still base their moves off this particular attack. I don't like Lucina's nearly as much, but come on, it's the same thing. Roy and Krom I'm actually going to put down in B tier, though. They're just kind of, as I said, in that awkward middle ground where they don't feel incredibly hefty or incredibly stylish. Ike is up in S tier, though. He does for heft what Marth and Lucina do for elegance. The Ice Climbers are also going up in S tier, apart from that little hiccup with the sound on the second Climber's hammer. I think they do basically everything else great. King DDD B tier, this is just not as interesting as a lot of his moves, and it feels a bit inappropriate on him. Mega Man, I think I'll go A tier. It's one of the better utilizations of that stiffness as far as I'm concerned. It's a cool, very flashy animation, and there aren't really that many concrete references on this list, and this is a very concrete reference to a Mega Man power, and it's a cool one. Shulk, I think, is just sneaking into S tier. I don't like it nearly as much as Ike's. I like the sound design better, but it leaves so much less of a presence because of how wimpy that motion trail is. Does doesn't feel as chunky either despite having the heavier sound design, but eh, really they're so close to each other it feels kind of hard to justify doing just one in S tier. That one's pretty borderline though. Cloud, no question in my mind that this is an S tier. Corrin, honestly F tier, they had so much time to perfect this overhead sword arc and they still messed it up. Hero S tier, I love the posing on it. Sora A tier, this one would be S tier if it felt better to land. And then dig Steve out of the depths here and I'll put him in A tier. Actually, you know what? I know we've just inflated the S tier like crazy, but I think it belongs there. It's this really cool combination of stylized stiffness, which feels totally in place on Steve, and a flowing recovery animation. And the way they've designed it feels so intuitive with the sweet spot. And it's got custom sound design that works well. While we're digging stuff out of the depths, I should have put Inkling with the drop kicks. Let's do that. In concept, this is basically the same as Diddy's, but I think it feels so much better in action. It's got a nice sense of springiness to it. The recovery portion actually starts at the appropriate time. It's slower to start up, and that often does give moves an advantage because you can get a better sense of anticipation, but it's still just implement it better overall. Yeah, really nice extension on this one, one very pure line of action. Having the cross legs is a little bit of a weird pose, but on Inkling, this kind of extreme skater-inspired character, I think it actually works well. The landing's appropriate, and there's not too much snappiness on this one. The legs do move into position a little bit abruptly, but the actual full body motion isn't too bad, and that's what you tend to notice more when you're viewing this more the way it's intended to be seen. Yeah, that looks fine. A tier. It's very well implemented technically, and the cross legs, that's never actually a detail I'd noticed before, but it fits the character. They could have easily just not done that, right? And the animation still would have been fine, but they went just a little bit further with it, and I appreciate it. Wario. And let's get the rest of the Mario gang in there too. Peach, Daisy, Rosalina, Bowser Jr., Piranha Plant. I really don't know why this one is so funny. On paper, it's a pretty straightforward kick, but it's something about just how almost casually Wario chucks it out, and the extremely exaggerated body breaking on the foot, which is a common trait among a lot of Wario's moves. Yeah, look at how just colossal his foot gets, and it's not just for a couple of frames, it's not just during the most um, active part of the move, it just stays out there until he starts retracting it back. The recovery animation is just not interesting at all on this one. I feel like there was a little bit of room to have Wario, you know, overcorrect and then have to panically get back into position. That might be a bit much considering how much you see this move, maybe a bit over the top. Landing animation is a little bit weird. Yeah, Wario is a snappy character. They've taken some of that away over time, but it, he's still supposed to be kind of almost too abrupt in the way he moves around sometimes. He's taken inspiration from the WarioWare games, but that doesn't just give him a free pass for everything, and this seems too sudden. Peach. It's a big smack with a very well-defined arc and interesting concept for this one. She's hitting you with her crown. Yeah, every time I mention this, I get comments from people who didn't realize what she was doing. Look at that. It's her crown, and both the way she takes it off and hits with it, and then the way she puts it back, all one very smooth, graceful motion, as you would expect from a princess, right? Particularly this princess. Landing animation... Uh, that kind of sucks, actually. Her crown just appears back on her head. She could have very easily landed with the crown still in her hand and then put it back on as she's getting up. That would mean that if she cancels the get-up animation early, then the crown would have to snap back into place then, but it's got to snap back somewhere. I think planning it so that it has to happen sometimes in between animations is a lot more sensible than planning so that it is always going to have that weird snap no matter what, even if you don't do anything. Feels good to land, too.
And then Daisy's is, yeah, exactly the same. And a lot of the time I will penalize her for ripping a move off from Peach that fits on Peach but not her, but in this particular case, I think it works fine on the more tomboyish princess as well. It maybe even works a little bit better, but it also fits Peach really well too, so yes, I'm just gonna say it's a good animation. Rosalina is also supposed to be a very flowing, elegant character. This move is supposed to embody that. It does for the most part. I feel like Rosalina herself is a little bit stiff while she's doing it. Um, okay, you get a bit of interpolation weirdness. Is that just a Luma thing? Let's send Luma out of the way. So here... Oh no, it still looks weird. Okay, that's an interpolation thing. That's just because the game is inventing frames in slow motion that you're not originally supposed to see. In full gameplay scale and speed, this doesn't show up, so I don't hold it against it. Very distracting, just try to ignore it anyways. Yeah, Rosalina bends back a little bit while she's doing this, so the intention is supposed to be you create this smooth circle as she's flipping around. I don't think it's fully delivered on though. I think she should be leaning back a little bit more and turning her body into a bit more of an arc. Wait, hold on. Now that I'm looking for it, does this just look a little bit weird and jumpy even at full gameplay scale and speed? I feel like it does. I don't know if everyone can see what I'm seeing, but yeah, there's almost like a little brief moment of bleh, bleh. Yeah, editing Mock Rock here, so I think it's just sort of a dark aura particle effect on her that just flashes on and off too quickly. I'll never be able to unsee that now. Yeah, the galaxy itself is a great particle effect. I don't think this is the best use of it, though. I think moves where it gets to stay in place more, like Down Smash, for example, that kind of stuff just works better than a galaxy moving around. Landing animation is very vulnerable to the rotation again, and this time I really don't think it sticks to the landing. Rosalina is just too big, and she's holding herself too stiffly. So I don't buy in this kind of situation the fact that she's just, you know, sped up the rotation a little bit. It looks like she's snapping. Luma's attack is about as basic as all of Luma's attacks, but I do like the recovery portion on it here. That's a very nice, uh, almost orbital path back into position. Bowser Jr.'s got this cannonball flail thing. Interesting forward air, at least. I don't think it necessarily conveys the power of the move that well, and the way that the wrecking ball comes out and then its momentum is redirected and then comes back in, it's not bad, but it doesn't look incredibly strong or natural. The way the flap closes looks good. The way it opens up, it just kind of snaps out of nowhere. Now, to some degree, that's okay. You're really not going to notice those kinds of things when you're just watching the move play out here. And the fact that the flap is very obviously open in the animation is the main thing that matters. Having it take a couple more frames to get into position and then maybe flap around a little bit would be more realistic, but it would also possibly detract from the silhouette, so I think it's, yeah, not a big deal. Might even be the right choice. Landing animation... Lands with a bit of a thud. There is some jerkiness depending on the path that the Wrecking Ball was in when it landed. That's fine. That's to be expected. The thud seems almost a little bit out of place, though. Bowser Jr. is leaning back when the forward air is out and then just kind of abruptly lands forward, but not in a way that really feels like the Wrecking Ball is just naturally dragging it into that position. Maybe in some very specific spots, but for the most part, it's not that convincing. It feels really good to wave around. Connecting with it. Yeah, surprisingly weak. I don't even know if this will kill. Not even that close. I really don't think the connection sound effect works that well, even though this is not an especially strong move. So you're waving a wrecking ball around, but not with that much force, and it sounds a little bit weak when it connects, so the move doesn't really feel like it has that much of a purpose or a sense of identity to me. Prana Plant. So congratulations to Sakurai for being able to turn this kind of character into a like functional moveset. This is an interesting concept for a forwarder using the pod as an attack. This one feels fine to use. It's really nothing special though, and I don't really think it emphasizes the most interesting aspect of Piranha Plant, right? That giant mouth. Because weirdly enough, Piranha Plant does not actually bite for a single one of its aerials. And forward air ended up as kind of a bland animation overall. Not that every animation needs to be super fancy, right? But I just feel like there was room to do something a bit more interesting with it. Not the most personality of any of Piranha Plant's moves, but nice bit of anticipation. The recovery animation is very smooth. It's a good, well-defined arc. Landing animation has a bit of vulnerability again, but overall I'm going to say it works pretty well. The fact that Piranha Plant moves the pot above its head almost immediately definitely gives it some leeway. And I like the way it falls on its face and grits its teeth as it swishes down a little bit. That's the most personality the entire animation has. Wario, I think I'm going to give eight 
tier. It's not my all-time favorite animation of his, not the funniest animation of his, but I think honestly on most characters it would be like a B tier at best. It plays with the quirks of his particular animation style very well. Peach is getting S tier, another overhead art going up here. It just feels so good to use and it's well animated all across the board, barring the landing animation snappiness, but that's a pretty minor consideration. And then Daisy is not paying the Echo Fighter tax whatsoever. S tier for her as well. Rosalina, do I want to do B or C tier for this? I like the elegance. I like the flow, at least, that they're going for. But again, I feel like the implementation wasn't perfect. That bit of almost glitchiness right at the start, I'm never going to be able to unsee now. And the landing animation kind of sucks. Yeah, I didn't really expect to be putting this one this low. Overall, I think Rosalina is a fantastically animated character, but this is not a high point for her. As a junior C tier as well, I think the concept is interesting. No one else really has a wrecking ball move. But other than the sound effects, which really only push a move over the top in very borderline cases. I don't really like anything about its implementation that well. And then Piranha Plant B tier, and it's a close B tier. What pushes it over the edge for me here is the fun landing animation. The Belmont Simon Richter. The classic whip crack they use for a lot of their moves. Now, this basic version is my least favorite of the three because you can angle it up and down as well. This one, for balance purposes, I guess, is like it just looks slightly short ranged. He seems like he's holding back a bit of the whip's length more than he really needs to be. Still a good sense of power behind it, but just looks slightly cramped up here and down here. Okay, so if I do it from the neutral position, this is about as far as it extends. It just barely puts the tip off screen. Upward, I'll check the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't quite go off screen there. So technically there's about the same amount of whip out there each time, but it's just, I guess, a bit less noticeable with the upwards and downward variants because there's some verticality in there as well. So subjective and honestly a tiny nitpick, but hey, what are you coming to these videos for? Landing animation on this one, yeah, he's got the smooth landing again, so I sort of have to take back what I said earlier about how most of these are too snappy. I just sort of got a bad batch early on. The Belmonts continue to have some of my favorite sound design, whether we're talking about swinging it or connecting it. Sweet spot. Sour spot. Which you basically need to be touching your opponent to be getting. It does sound quite a bit weaker. It's just funny that the tipper sweet spot and then the more average hitbox don't actually sound very distinct from each other. Tipper. And then the average hit. Like, to me, those sound basically the same. I think you get a more satisfying crack if you land the true tipper. Simple animations, but they're well done technically. You've got to give bonus points for three variations, and this is one of the cases where I think sound design actually pushes me over the line into A tier. Let's finish up the Metroid characters. Zero Suit Samus, and where are you? Ridley. So Zero Suit Samus is, uses the rocket heels, and I'm not really a huge fan of that design on her character, but this is certainly one of the more subtle implementations of it, and I actually think she traces a really nice path with her feet. Quick and well-defined arc feels very snappy, and I like the smooth recovery. Landing animation on this... Yeah, she's got a fair distance to move, but out of all of these more complex ones, I think it's one of the better implemented ones. Flame sound effects are cool. Ridley, one of the biggest characters in Smash, has these massive limbs, massive jaws, massive tail, and his forward air is this dinky little thing. It's just embarrassing. I hate this move, and it's legitimately a serious part of the reason that I never really wanted to try to play Ridley in any real capacity. Back when I did my worst animations in Smash video, this was my choice. I don't think my opinions wavered on it at all. Bottom line, he's coiling his tail up behind him way more than he needs to, and it makes him look just weak. The landing is, yeah, about average. It doesn't look great getting up. It doesn't look super snappy either. I actually like this sound effect, but on contact, it feels so weak. I had it on the white metal skin just because I thought it would stand out against the background more. Let's see if this version still has the same sound effect. Yeah, it does. See, to me this sounds kind of metallic. It's got kind of a coiled spring sound to it, so it is sort of appropriate for the coiled tail. You don't need to be super literal with sound design, and they're often not in Smash, but still, I do think it works better on the metal one. Zero Suit Sam is A tier. I'm actually a pretty big fan of how that one turned out. Ridley, yeah, obviously F tier. Joker does a similar thing to Zero Suit Samus, and actually so does me Brawler, so we'll just do all the me's while we're at it. And Gunner. So Joker is doing a similar thing to Zero Suit Samus, except I think his knife might be involved. Okay, so no, it's not. It's actually just his feet. Now, Joker does do this with other attacks that don't use the knife. Not that there are a whole lot of those. It's fine for up air because it's relatively subtle. Uh, for dash attack, pretty prominent, but also the way he holds himself makes it way more obvious that the knife isn't involved. I think it's just a little bit messy, this particular one. It's got kind of a spindle-y quality to it as well. Uh, Joker is 
kind of a weirdly small character in Ultimate. He's got very skinny legs in comparison to Samus, and he doesn't have the fire at the end of his feet helping trace out the path that they're traveling in more. Landing's okay on this, maybe a little bit heavy feeling for how nimble Joker is supposed to be as a character, but it is a very well-defined pose. The entire thing does look a little bit messier on this side, particularly the landing animation, but he's wearing a trench coat, what are you gonna do? Joker also has a persona to help him out, and they don't do the same animation. That's what I like about these ones where Arsene is involved. He's doing a parallel complementary attack. Take a look at it from this side too. Yeah, their feet come together in a really nice point. Does Arsene have a landing animation? No, he just kind of plops himself onto the ground. Eh, I think it's alright. You sort of want him to be towering over Joker the entire time. This one's fine if nothing special. With Arsene involved... Yeah, he gets that heavily reverbed sound effect, which is one of my favorite hit sounds in any game I've played. Brawler. It's an interesting path that he takes here. It feels kind of lopsided compared to the other two, honestly. The way he brings his foot down at the end is weird, and I don't really love the way he recovers from it, but it does make it feel strong. He's using gravity to help himself out, and it is a very well-defined pose he ends up in, which makes himself look in control. But maybe just a little bit too in control. It doesn't really look like the rest of the animation is leading up to that. Oh, that's why it looks so funny. I didn't realize he was twisting in two different directions. Yeah, he twists his chest towards the background and then away from the background. That's why it looks weird. I always had it in my head that he was using the same method that Joker and Zero Suit Samus use. This? Yeah. But why? Why would you do that? I was having trouble deciding what to think about this one. This all makes sense now. That's why I like the final pose, but despite all that, there was still something about it that seemed really odd to me. Landing animation is fine for the second hit, although I still think his weight distribution looks a little bit off, and if I do it on the first hit, that looks pretty weird. Me Swordfighter, the weird Link-inspired multi-hit instead of just using a sword arc like most actual sword characters do. I know I end up harping about this kind of thing in a lot of episodes, but it really is strange that Gunner and Brawler are generally very faithful representatives of the archetype. Swordfighter, not nearly to the same degree, and that arcing forward error is what I consider to be like the sword move. The implementation isn't really my favorite either. There's basically no follow through. He's got the sword out and then it immediately retracts. It really doesn't look like it's being delivered with much force. It's not the strongest move out there, I know. But even taking that into account, it just looks really weak. The landing animation as he's coming down is a bit abrupt, but he's got a very nice get up on it. And then Gunner. See, this is how you have a forwarder that represents the archetype. She's a gunner? She just shoots you. I really like the posing on this one throughout the entire thing too, both the anticipation and the follow-through afterwards. A very well-defined silhouette that always reads well, and the physics on the recoil, that just feels so satisfying to pull off. I don't really like the way that the particle effect just disappears instantly. It would have been nice if there was some kind of fizzle-out animation on it. It sounds nice though. There's the layered sound effects of the pew pew of the laser shot and also a more fiery sound from the actual gun itself, and they're both well handled and then connecting it. Impact sound is interesting on this one, it's a very weak move. And it does sound like it. It's not my favorite move to land, and I feel like they could have done more with the sound design, but at least it does stand out. Still works though, and the get up on it is... yeah, still pretty good. Joker alone would be B tier probably, but I really like the way Arsene interacts with this one, so I think that bumps it up to A. Brawler, yeah, F tier, I hate that twist. And then Swordfighter, same thing. Both of these, to their credit, are less generic than a lot of the Mii's moves. They tried to do something reminiscent of the archetype, to at least some degree, not so much for Swordfighter, but still doing something that no other character does, which I can appreciate, but I don't think this was the best choice for either of them. Gunner, I can say a lot of the same stuff, except I think this one actually did succeed. Uh, I've got some little gripes with it. It's not my all-time favorite move to hit. I think the laser disappearance is a little bit jarring. Now, that does happen with a lot of Smash moves, and you can make an argument that for gameplay purposes it's better to have just everything it's doing very clearly defined, not getting smaller over time unless the damage is actually changing along with it, not lingering in the air for a moment as it sort of fizzles out, because that might imply there's actually a lingering hitbox on it, but just purely as an actual animation I think it does look a little bit ugly there. Bayonetta. There's another multi-hit aerial, and you can hold each hit individually, so I'm gonna have to look at all of them. Hit one... Kind of weak posing, actually. Hit two. Yeah, that one's okay. And then three. Yeah, I like the way she finishes it. The weak posing shows up a lot on this first hit if you hold it out. You're not really gonna be doing that a whole lot, to be fair, but you don't design moves with the intention that, ah, no one's gonna see this, it's fine. Hit two. Yeah, that's when it starts to become more defined. And then hit three. Let's get some height to work with here. 
Yeah, okay, that's Bayonetta. I love the ring particle effects too, they add so much more visual interest. She's got very exaggerated landing animations on all her moves, which is appropriate for Bayonetta, but it also is necessary because she's a character who her special moves actually influence how long it takes her to get up, so it needs to be exaggerated to make that stand out more. It's a pretty important part of her balance. The landing animation does accomplish this, and I like the way she keeps her torso somewhat upright. She still looks in control. Very snappy on the getup, though. I think I'll go A tier for this one. I don't love absolutely everything about it, but there's so much stuffed into this move. I've got to give some props for that. Lucario and Greninja, the last Pokemon. Lucario, this upwards kick, pretty distinct forward air, and it's got some really nice snappiness to it. I've always enjoyed using it. I played Lucario for a little bit, and a big part of my incentive for wanting to pick him up was this forward air. Just feels fun to use. Very well-defined arc that even survives going through an opponent. Extremely strong pose, great anticipation, great follow-through, great recovery. Weirdly always done with his left leg, Lucario could very well be an ambidextrous character, but he's not. I don't know why. The landing animation on this one. Uh, it makes sense. He lands on his lower foot and then that sort of acts like a fulcrum to pivot him down. I feel like it happens a few frames faster than it ideally would, but they're also playing within the constraints of a landing animation. It really has to get a move on. And the get up after he lands is nice. I do feel like he could be pushing himself up with that grounded hand a bit more, but it's okay. I don't think I've ever actually pointed out in this series how Lucario lights his opponent on fire or on aura. Very noticeable with forward air in particular because it's often one of the cases where Lucario is making the most prolonged contact with his opponent. It's a cool detail. And then Greninja's water kunai. There are a lot of characters I don't think I'd love this concept on, but for Greninja in particular, it works for me. It's once again a very distinct move. This is a sword attack technically, but no other character really has a sword attack that works quite like this. Pretty well-defined arc does feel a little bit cramped right at the end, which is the part that I wouldn't necessarily enjoy as much on a lot of characters, but Greninja's a ninja. He's supposed to feel intensely in control of what he's doing. I'm not a big fan of the way his kunai disappears, the way it shrinks back in. A lot of moves in Smash do that, and a lot of them look inappropriate, but it looks, even at proper gameplay speed and scale, kind of floppy and out of place. He has some other moves that do it, like his forward smash, for example, is technically doing the same thing, I think. Yeah, it's visible here, but there's some nice splash particle effects that kind of break the silhouette up and make it look more like it's just splashing out of existence, which I just wish these moves did purely anyways, but it is sort of the solution the Smash developers have come up with for spawning and despawning items. Forward smash, not too bad. Forward air, it does stand out a bit more. Landing animation is pretty good. Greninja has to move a fair amount, and I wish there was a slight bit more of a hop in this one, but not too big a deal, and I would say that at full gameplay speed and scale, it actually reads pretty well. Lucario, I think, S tier. It's very simple, but it's just executed so well, and I've always been a huge fan of it, so it's definitely getting some of the personal bias bump acting as if this entire list wasn't personal bias. And then you know what? Greninja, I'm kind of on the fence about this one, but I think a lot of people will expect to see it in S tier. It's such a cool concept. Yeah, it's a little bit cramped. Yeah, I don't love the way he puts the kunai away, but... It's still a kunai made of water and it feels fun to hit people with. Mr. Game & Watch. And I'll do Villager and Isabel as well, the last remaining projectile forward airs. Actually, does Olimar count? You know what, I already decided to pass over him for overhead swings, so sure. Yeah, so Mr. Game & Watch, even by the standards of his moveset, which always needs to be judged sort of by its own standards, he's in that camp. This is a weird one to think about. I'm not a huge fan of how he starts with the bomb behind him and then moves in front of himself. I, I know it's faithful to the sprite. He does remain facing forward the entire time, which improves the move's readability for sure, and gives it a kind of old, tiny, slapstick, hey guys, like what I've got kind of vibe to it. And then the landing animation... Actually, you know, that's pretty good. He's like shielding himself against the blast. Huh, I've never noticed that before. That works great. Villager and Isabel's slingshot. I've evaluated their back airs before, and obviously they're very similar moves. I think in comparison, forward air might even be slightly lacking though. These are moves where readability is a big concern, and compared to back air, it's already at a bit of a disadvantage just because it comes out quicker. But this silhouette before launch is not really that clear. He's holding the slingshot slightly closer to his head than I necessarily think he needs to. Afterwards, I like it. Very nice stylish release. But this has some minor gameplay implications, very minor admittedly, but they're there. Planning animation, that's eh, fine. The slingshot just does instantly disappear, but looking at it as intended, that really doesn't bug me. Comparing the two of them, the concept is obviously the same. Isabel has the same issue where she holds the slingshot a bit closer than she needs to as well. 
A little more personality with the way she closes her eyes before she launches. Villager does technically blink during the animation, but it's not anywhere near as noticeable here, where it's much more of an actual scrunched face part of the anticipation. I like Villager's posing more, it feels a bit more fun. Isabel, you know, it fits her characterization, she's kind of struggling to control it so she needs to lean back a bit, but definitely more cramped in comparison. Alamar, this kind of half-hearted SWAT. This does sort of match the vibe of the Pikmin games, even if he's not literally doing this in Pikmin. Compared to most overhead arcs, it definitely feels on the weak side. I do want to give it some bonus points for the way he smoothly tosses the Pikmin behind himself afterwards. That was nicely implemented, but the Pikmin that aren't active kind of break the silhouette up of that a lot of the time. There's a recurring issue with a lot of Olimar's moves. Landing animation is actually not great. Yeah, why does he just abruptly change directions like that? Five different Pikmin types. Their sound design matches what they do. Game & Watch A tier, it's a creative concept. Execution is generally pretty good. This is another move where the landing animation is maybe just pushing it over the edge for me. Villager and Isabel B tier, again, creative concept, but I do have some minor gripes with it. I prefer villagers slightly, but not a tier's worth. And then Olimar, eh, B tier. It's not really an animation that I feel that much towards either way, which is kind of the point. You're not really supposed to be using Olimar's aerials a lot. Speaking of aerials, you're not supposed to be using a lot. Little Max forward air is one that looks completely off kilter, kind of embarrassing, and that's exactly what it's supposed to be doing. He's trying to put some of his boxing expertise into it, and you can see that in the powerful initial delivery, but the final pose he ends up in looks so awkward that it makes it very clear that it's just not really doing what he'd like it to. Reads well from both sides. You can see a little more over here how twisted he looks. Landing animation... Pretty heavy. The getup is fairly smooth afterwards. Still, like a lot of these, not great push off from the grounded hand, but there is at least some springiness to it, and the heavy landing feels in place. And yeah, it feels awful to land. <laughs> as it should. Might be kind of a funny pick for it, but I'm actually going with S tier for this one. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Ryu and Ken. You know, I've always thought this kick feels a little bit gross to use. If it's the kind of retro Street Fighter mold it is, just ripped directly out of Street Fighter. So the dev's hands were kind of tied there, but yeah, look at the way he just kind of limply throws his leg out there, the way that his hand moves along with it. That doesn't necessarily contribute a lot to the actual power. The landing animation looks slightly wonky. Just doesn't really look like the weight's distributed where it's supposed to be. Get up seems slightly clunky, and he would be landing painfully on the side of his foot, so he needs to just instantly snap it out of that position. Definitely looks weird in that context. In real context, um... Yeah, it's not so bad here. Ryu's not really that much of a kicking character in Street Fighter, but Ken is, and he's still got the same thing. Now, the kick angle down thing, that really doesn't feel off at all in a traditional fighting game. In fact, if when we look at Terry, you'll see he's got a similar thing. But in Smash, where air-to-air -air combat is a way bigger deal, it does feel a little bit funny. Ken gets this for his up air, which is very reminiscent of Lucario's forward air. And it's like, yeah, that feels more in place for Smash. You've always got to give at least a few bonus points for Street Fighter sound design, though. <laughs> God, that makes it feel so much better. Cool that the reference is to Street Fighter, but judging the kicks standalone, I think they're honestly kind of ugly and unremarkable. And frankly, if they weren't concrete references, they might be F tier material. Let's do Kid Icarus. Palutena, Pit, Dark Pit. Palutena's actually got a sidekick as well, and as effective an attack as this may be, and while it feels fine to land, I gotta say, from a pure animation perspective, it's slightly messy. The particle effect on her foot is just screaming tipper sweet spot to me, but if you actually look at it, that's not how this works. 10.2, and then if I get as close as I possibly can, it still does 10.2. It's actually kind of debatably a sidekick or a back kick. Uh, I didn't realize that's exactly what she was doing. Her dress messes with the silhouette slightly. Pretty decent extension and recovery, but she's not coiling her leg up nearly as much as I'd like. Makes the delivery feel just a bit half-hearted. You can argue that she's a goddess, she's throwing out the move with some effortless quality to it, but this isn't really a move that gives off that intention to me. Landing animation is... What? What is going on here? I guess she's catching herself with a float? Yeah, okay, I guess I'll chalk it up to goddess powers. It's so over the top that this must be intentional. But you know what? It's actually part of what always made me think this was messy, because just looking at this part of the kick, that's actually handled better than I thought sort of from watching it over the years. I thought this was way more cramped and it turns out no, not really, but the reason that I thought that is because the way you typically use forward air with Palutena is like this, right, close to the ground landing, and that's when she is 
leaned over and then just abruptly instantly popped back up. So no, I actually don't think I'm going to give that landing animation a pass. Pit and Dark Pit, same forward air. This is a cool concept at least. I think their brawl forward air that they used to have was more fun to hit and showed off the nature of the split swords better, but this is still pretty distinctive. The angle chosen for the spin is a nice compromise between showing off the full rotation and still making it clear that it's a horizontally spinning blade. The fact that he just completely lets go of the sword and has it spinning like that the entire time doesn't make any actual sense, but I'll chalk it up to magic. The landing animation for this one is pretty rough. He looks like he's hitting the ground hard, but almost not hard enough because he is bent way over while he's doing this. So when he does land, he jerks into a kind of weird spot. I like basically everything else about these though. Fun concept, mostly executed very well, A tier seems fair. Palatina's landing animation on the other hand, this is the harshest penalty I've ever given to one of these by a considerable margin. It bumps it down to C tier. I wish she bent her knee more in the chamber pose and I don't love the particle effect on the toe, but you know, those are relatively inoffensive. This would be B tier if she just didn't snap up like that. That decision single-handedly lowered my opinion of this animation quite a bit for years. Duck Hunt. <sighs> it's just... He has so many moves that all work like this. The duck flies out and then it flies back. It's smooth motion on the duck, but even then it's done in a way that kind of makes it difficult to tell exactly when the attacking portion of the move is over. And even ignoring that, it's like, oh, isn't it so impressive that Sakurai took a character who was just a couple of sprites and turned it into a full-fledged fighter? Well, sure, but if you fill a character's moveset with this kind of stuff, I mean, you can turn anyone into a fighter. The attacking with a duck angle is kind of creative, I guess, but it's not really that interesting a concept and there's really not that much done with it. All the actual interesting moves on Duck Hunt's kit don't use the duck. Landing animation looks great on impact, especially on the dog. I like the pose that the dog makes and the duck, even though it has to snap, obviously, it's a nice hop that it does to get back into position. The way the dog moves after landing, it looks a little weird. Not too big a deal in context, but could still be done with a little bit more fluidity. I'm going to go C tier on this one because I don't really like the way the duck moves after the attack. Looks smooth, but has some potential gameplay ramifications, and this is the most B tier move to ever exist. Aside from that, another retro character, Pac-Man. Pac-Man's little spin kick here, it's definitely got a bit of a floppy flailing feel to it, but it's fun. I love the snap on it too, and the way his entire body just kind of never stops spinning feels smooth. Yeah, definitely a lot of limb movement on this, arguably too much. It makes the silhouette feel kind of jarring at full speed sometimes, but it's very cartoony. It looks like he's having a good time. Landing animation... Oh, I don't love that. I think it probably would have worked better if he just kind of kept spinning on the ground, as is this thing where he catches himself and then just instantly snaps back into place. That's kind of gross. Doesn't exactly feel strong, but maybe even slightly stronger feeling than it is. Uh. 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 Yeah, sure, I've got some gripes with it, but it just feels so fun to use. A tier. Snake. This is a big fan favorite move, as spiking aerials tend to be. Does it actually stick the landing for the animation? It's looking pretty good, I gotta say. Good anticipation, the way he holds his leg up feels pretty smooth, and then really snappy, really good follow through on the kick. I like the pose he ends up in afterwards. I like the way he throws his arms into it, the way his foot snaps back just a little bit and kind of dangles after the kick. The landing animation for this one, it's a good heavy landing, as it should be. The way he gets up is... Uh, bit abrupt. Not the worst I've seen, but I really don't get the feeling he's heaving himself up at all. Connecting with the sweet spot. Yeah, that feels really good. It's not the most intuitive spike in the world, though. To me, it feels most natural that that sweet spot would be the really meaty part of the drop, but that's not quite where it is. Still, not only is it a very cool move and a very distinct feeling forward air, but they also, I think, delivered technically, so that's going to be S tier. Rob. From very big and dramatic to very small and practical, this works, though. It's not the best sense of anticipation, even on a very fast move, but it's not bad, and the bit of stiffness in there can be attributed to the fact that, obviously, Rob is a robot. Great motion trails that they gave to Rob in Ultimate. I think it enhances so many of its moves. Nice follow-through afterwards. I like the way its arms are almost catching themselves on shocks. Checking at full speed to make sure it's not just an interpolation thing, and no, it's not. If you look at his shoulders there, there is some defined vibration. Landing animation... Uh, not great. Yeah, it's designed for the very beginning of the move, it looks like. Yeah, there it looks fine, but it's a bit too much for this kind of move, I gotta say. Rob never really leans over that far 
Well, I shouldn't say never. There's a very small portion in the middle of the animation, but even then, its base is still relatively stable. So I don't think it was necessary for it to completely topple over like this. Rob's a character who could actually have totally gotten away with just snapping back into place. Uh, so what I'm thinking this would probably have been better suited as is the base lands flat on the ground with the flexible spine, quote unquote, bent over. And then with the base still anchored, the rest of his body just kind of rises back into place. Feeling a B tier on that one. Meta Knight. Yeah, I don't like this. It's easier to see on this side how kind of awkward, and I keep coming back to that word cramped, the feeling that the final pose he strikes takes on. Why is he holding his sword against his body like that instead of extended. I know he's got kind of stubby arms and big hands and he's wearing gauntlets, but surely he can flex his wrist and move his fingers a little more than that, right? And other than that, there's not really much to this move. The three slashes happen so quickly that it's not very distinct what's even going on. So you're really relying on the way they blend together and then particularly that final pose to sell it. And I don't think it comes together very well. Kind of feels like it's just slapping away at you. Landing animation for this one, way easier to see on this side. I like the momentum in the step. That actually feels pretty in character for Meta Knight. Creates some nice flourish with the cape. Yeah, that part's fine. Not enough to save it from F tier though. Terry. And we'll do Kazuya. I'll wrap up with fighting game characters while we're here. As I mentioned, Terry actually has a pretty similar concept to Ryu and Ken. There's more spark in this one though. Way more forceful delivery, not even close. In this case, the arm extension actually looks like it's contributing a lot to the move's power. A bit more stylish pose, that's just Terry versus especially Ryu. Landing animation. Uh, it's similar to a lot of these one-handed landings. Nice actual sense of impact on the ground, but not great spring up. In this case, it's really easy to see that he's not pushing up with his planted hand at all. I don't know why you do that. And like Ryu and Ken, he also gets his own custom sound design. <laughs> And like Ryo and Ken, I think it sounds great. And Kazuya is actually doing more or less the same thing. The leg extension, if you just isolate and look at that, is actually fantastic. But Kazuya has this problem with a lot of his moves. His entire body doesn't really look like it's working together all that well. His left arm that's going out with the kick just kind of flops there. There's not really a great sense of his core working alongside his leg. His right arm and back is striking what's kind of the right pose, but it's not done with any real conviction. And it's got some of that stiffness that so many Tekken animations do. This is not the worst example of it. And I don't even always necessarily hold that against Kazuya. The developers obviously could have done something different if they wanted to, but they wanted to maintain the Tekken and feel. That said, part of the tech and feel just being janky animations is not a blanket excuse. Landing animation, about on par with a lot of these. Custom sound design again. That works fine. I think the lower hit pause that Kazuya has on all his moves feels pretty weird with this one though. He just kind of keeps sinking down. It makes the impact feel very floaty. Doesn't really feel like he's delivering solid contact. So yeah, Kazuya C tier. If this wasn't a reference to the Tekken style, probably F tier. Terry's getting A though. I think this is just by far the best implementation. Yeah, he was at an inherent advantage just because of the nature of the animation style of their source games, but okay, doesn't change my mind. Lucas. This is a pretty solid feeling forward air, but the particle effects have to sort of step in and save it because I think his actual just kick motion is not that great. I like it right up until near the end of the extension, but between not really following through that well and the pullback being basically just a reverse path of the way out, it makes it feel like he's not putting nearly as much force into the kick as he actually was, because if you look at it in very slow motion, right up until his foot is actually all the way out, I think that's fine. He also gets a slight momentum shift while he's pulling it out, and with Lucas's particular physics, it works great with some trajectories, and other ones it's always felt a bit strange to me. Landing animation... It's another one-hander. Is he even putting his hand on the ground? No, it looks like he's just barely hovering above the ground, and considering Lucas is a very floaty character, that makes sense, and it also explains why he's not pushing off with it, but the way he comes up is still kind of floppy. Different sweet spot and sour spot hitboxes on this one, and this is why I complain about the magical sound design sometimes. There's the sweet spot. There's the sour spot. Now, the sweet spot is certainly more dramatic and flashy and lets you know you've hit it well, but to me, this... This feels more satisfying to land, and it sounds like it hits harder. That'll be a B tier. Sephiroth. The fact that Sephiroth has to do a stab here instead of an overhead slash is kind of funny, and it feels, frankly, kind of wrong, like he's holding back. I totally understand why it was done for balance purposes because a sword this long it'd just cover way too much space it wouldn't necessarily be that fair unless they made it really slow which would probably be frustrating in its own right considering this is what they went with i think it's a pretty good implementation feels snappy it does run into the problem that where exactly the active part of the animation is can be slightly fuzzy 
But the particle effect helps with that, and so does the conviction that Sephiroth puts into the actual stab itself. It does have a Cyrus spot that lasts for just a couple of frames to give Sephiroth some leeway. 6.6 .6 versus... 12. Actually, that's the tipper sweet spot. And by the way, the spark does a good job showing that off too, because Sephiroth has different sweet spot rules for different styles of attack with his sword. But even compared to landing the closer sour spot. So there's a lot to pile onto this move, but I think the way it was implemented does a pretty good job at making everything intuitive. Landing animation. Uh, pretty good. The landing itself is fine. The sword does have to snap back a little bit, but even then, not too bad. The getup is graceful and it's got some swagger to it, as you'd expect for Sephiroth. Slightly slidey, maybe, but I've definitely seen worse today. I like the arc the sword takes as it comes back into position. The reverse grip that Sephiroth has to use in his idle state, I'm sure, was a headache to animate around a lot of the time. I think, generally speaking, they did quite a good job. Feels good to connect with. Not doing anything revolutionary, but it all just works well. <laughs> and the Sour Spot in comparison. Simple concept, but still kind of a unique one, and the execution on this one is so good that I'm really impressed by it. S tier. Wii Fit Trainer. <sighs> what is this? Why is this the one they went with? I understand that Wii Fit Trainer is kind of designed to have janky hitboxes, but what the hell is this? This barely even looks like an attack, and the yoga pose gimmick thing, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of, but generally speaking, at least the moves that they choose or the poses that they choose relatively match the moves this just doesn't fit here it's a forward air that barely hits forward instead it's got this spiking hitbox on the rear foot that's the strong part of the move and then yeah there's another hitbox technically in front and a little bit above but why what's the justification for that decision it doesn't add anything to Wii Fit Trainer's playstyle. maybe you can argue that you need to use interesting movement and position yourself creatively something like that but that's not a theme on most of her kit a lot of it works relatively conventionally yeah, as some moves have slightly odd hitboxes, you know, even something like forward tilt, it still just works as a forward tilt. That's not really an overarching theme, it feels like forward air was just kind of shoved in there because they wanted this particular pose somewhere. I'm sure that's not actually the case, if you ask Sakurai directly he'd probably have an explanation for it, but that's the impression it gives me. Also suffers from all the usual trappings of Wii Fit Trainer's moves, there's no squash and stretch, there's no motion trails, it makes everything feel very plain. The landing animation... Ugh. Yeah, that's not very good. I think I hate basically everything about this. The foot spiking is kind of hype, sure. That's one point in its favor and like 20 against it. Min Min. Min Min works completely differently than most characters, so you've got left arm forward air tilt, right arm forward air tilt, left arm forward air smash, right arm forward air smash, and then they can work in tandem with each other in different ways. And the right arm has multiple different variants. A lot of technical detail needed to go into these. It's cool that you can use them in tandem like this. Definitely looks a lot better if you allow her to do a full shoulder rotation into one punch before a full shoulder rotation into the other, the way that you would actually throw out a one-two. But you've got to make some compromises for the mechanics of Min Min. I do wish it was slightly more obvious when it was a tilt versus when it was a smash attack. They do some variation on the particle effects, and obviously it goes way further and it's slower, but this is one area that I think should be extremely obvious to even a relatively casual viewer at a glance, because it's a massive gameplay consideration. Same with the other arms. It's noticeable if you understand the character, but particularly on Megawatt, which always feels really heavy. And then Min Min's in a unique spot with the landing animations too, because she continues the attack. Which makes sense, right? It would be weird if she just cut them off abruptly. So she's actually just more or less using her neutral light and heavy landing. So there's her light landing, and then this is her heavy landing here, and then this is what happens when you use an attack out of a short hop, and then you can also move around with it, and this is what happens when you use an attack out of a full hop, and you can move right out of it too. Better to demonstrate it closer to the ground. So yeah, still a heavy landing with the arm extended out. You can still walk out of it, like this. So. They went with a pretty good neutral couple of landing animations is the main thing I'm taking away from this. And then, listen, I'm no massive fan of Min Min, but in terms of how our attacks actually feel to land... They do feel good. Definitely a weird one to look at. So much went into it though, and so much of it works well that I think A tier. Pyra Mithra. Pyra and Mithra were made much easier to develop by having them largely share animations. Mithra's moves are all faster, but other than that, they're the same. This one that I don't necessarily think benefited from that decision very well on either character. The more upward spinning sword arc is certainly distinct compared to most sword fighters. I'll definitely give props for that, but on Pyra, where it's supposed to be very strong, I think it feels a bit too swatty and non-committal. Coming up is fighting against gravity, 
The way it starts up doesn't really have that much snap to it, it just doesn't really feel as strong as it is. The sound design does help it admittedly, and you can make an argument for her feeling like she's just sort of pushing this giant sword right through you, but I don't really think that's the vibe that I get from a lot of her moves. I think this one works better on Mithra, bypasses the power issue by being a combo tool instead, but in this case the faster motion compared with just the huge movement that she's doing makes it kind of feel like it comes out of nowhere. I think it's a very graceful feeling move on both characters, the way they operate is fundamentally the same and the follow through on both of them is fantastic, but it feels more like a dance or a flourish and the fact that they're holding a sword in their hand is almost incidental. I think that's probably the intention behind these moves. It's supposed to sort of feel like sword dancing and, you know, fair enough, but they still don't really feel that appropriate for actual attacks and this is a fighting game, so that's kind of a big deal. Landing animation, pretty good. And Pyro's got the flame sound effects. I like Mithras as well. <laughs> As with Shulk, kind of lightsaber inspired. I'm a bit torn on these. I definitely give them points for originality. They feel kind of appropriate for the characterization, at least what I know about the Xenoblade series. Let me put it this way. It feels consistent with the rest of their characterization in Smash. And there is a lot of style behind them. If there weren't swords in their hands, these would be a fantastic part of like a victory animation. I think I'm reluctantly going to say B tier for both because there are elements of each one that I like more than the other. And that just leaves us with the last couple Fire Emblem characters. We've got Robin and Byleth. Robin's forward air is interesting. Another upward strike which looks inherently quite a bit weaker, and with the bronze sword that's fine because it's supposed to be weak, and then the leaven sword comes out and kind of carries it, because this is now a very strong move. <laughs> So it kind of looks like Robin doesn't really feel fully as coherent with the sword as the dedicated sword fighter characters, but magic is kind of coming in to save the day, which is on point. It's an interesting looking move with a very well-defined pose. Landing animation is pretty rough though. Flops down, pops back up. There's at least a bit of effort to have something resembling a step back and forth into appropriate positions there, but not fantastically done. And then for impact, yeah, the bronze sword feels kind of pathetic. And then the leaven sword feels great, which just leaves us with Byleth, this spear. It's a pretty long-ranged forward air, but for balance purposes, he's holding the spear weirdly close to the head. It's like with Sephiroth, where I get it, but at the same time, it does look kind of funny. He could clearly be getting a lot more reach out of that. His hand position looks kind of funny, too. Why is it turned over like that? What is he actually doing? Because I've always thought this one seemed a little bit weirdly stiff. Yeah. Okay, I don't really get why he's doing that. He's using a underhanded grip. So he's doing this with it, but why? If you just whipped it like you'd expect, you'd get way more force out of it. And that's why this has always looked funny to me. I've never examined it in any kind of detail, but yeah, he is he hitting you with the flat of the blade? He totally is. Look at this. I've been calling it a spear, but in reality, it's more of a glaive, a sword blade mounted on the end of a long pole, essentially. And he's smacking you with the flat of it. Why? That's why the tipper sweet spot of this one has always sounded so weird. I've always been like, wow, why did they go with such a thuddy cutting sound? It's because it's not a cutting sound. He's just thwacking you. Why? I've heard a lot of people complain about how weak that sweet spot sounds, and it's because it's supposed to. The forward air is supposed to come across as weak, except it's not actually that weak. In fact, it's a pretty strong forward air at the tipper. This is just so inappropriate. Okay, the landing is pretty good. There's even a slight bit of sense of him pushing off, so I'll give it that. But yeah, other than that, there were just so many weird decisions made on this one. I guess I'll say that the final pose he ends up in is also decent, but again, there's that kind of weird grip that he's stuck in, and the way that he just puts it away and then transitions back into the sword, it looks smooth. So. I'll give it some praise there too. Robin B tier. Despite the fact that the Leaven Sword is carrying him, and that does feel on point for him, there are still other moves that use the Bronze Sword and the Leaven Sword, where the Bronze Sword hit still feels more impactful. And then Byleth. In a lot of these episodes, I pick, you know, one big dramatic fan favorite move to top things off with, just to sort of end the video on a high point. I knew I wasn't doing that here. There are some things that bugged me with Byleth, but I was just going, you know, this is a character that I've played a fair amount of. Let's just put it in as sort of a nice topper. I think I'm going the big dramatic route again, though. In the opposite direction this time because man now that i've looked at this in more detail i've gone from disliking it to straight up hating it overall though i gotta say forwarders pretty strong bunch a lot of well animated ones in here and that was the forward air animation tier list all right thanks for watching everyone let me know what you thought likes and comments are a big thing that youtube uses to gauge with their video should be passed around to more people so if you think this one deserves it much appreciated you can watch another mock rock talk video here and a video on my main channel going over a complete top to bottom rework for link here and then patrons youtube members and twitch subs get perks like early videos and discord access later people